Well, uh, I wanted to tonight, if it's okay, or even if it's not, uh, I wanted to talk about discipleship. Uh, discipleship is about following Jesus. Essentially, that's what it's all about, following Jesus. And closer and closer, in that we become more and more like him as we walk in relationship with him and an observation of him. The call to be a disciple begins with such a simple invitation, follow me. But this is also such a difficult commission. Jesus is truly a hard act to follow. So tonight I'm going to share a few scattered thoughts about what it is and what it means to be a disciple today, to be a follower of Christ today, primarily from the book of Matthew. And then to finish, we're going to look at John chapter 10 uh, together. On October the 1st, 2005, I stood on an altar in front of hundreds of friends and families, onlookers who may as well have not even have been there, my gaze locked on the woman of my dreams as I publicly confessed my love and my commitment to her. I still remember, though I can't find words to suitably express or describe the euphoria of that occasion, of that joyous moment when I took her hand in mine and we began a lifelong journey together, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, I was hers and she was mine. We walked down to that altar as two and we left as one. In the same way, I remember June the 6th, 1999, when I stood on an altar in front of friends who would soon become family, though at the time they were merely onlookers who may as well have not even have been there because my gaze was locked on the redeemer of my soul as I publicly confessed my love and my commitment to him. I still remember, though I can't find words that adequately describe or express the euphoria of that occasion, of that joyous moment when he took my hand in his and we began a lifelong journey together, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, I was his and he was mine. I walked down to that altar in darkness and we left in light. Many of us here this evening will have shared a similar experience. When a person believes in their heart and confesses with their mouth and with their life that Jesus is Lord, they are rescued from the dominion of darkness, the Bible says, and brought into the kingdom of God, which is a kingdom of light. They are redeemed and forgiven of all sin, and that is a happy day. That is a wonderful moment. But as wonderful as that moment is, life moves on from that moment. Just as married life moves on from the ceremony, there's a reception, there's a honeymoon, and then there comes a time when you have to start building a life on the commitment that you made on that altar making good on its pledges and its promises. That's what discipleship is. Let's look first this evening to the fourth chapter of Matthew, the calling of the very first disciples of Jesus. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. It says this, As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father, Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. Um, I want you to notice something about discipleship here. It is the disciple that is called to follow the discipler at the discipler's convenience and at the disciple's expense. Let me say that one more time. It is the disciple that is called to follow the discipler at the disciple's convenience and at the disciple's expense. 
The example given here is that Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee. He briefly stops to call Simon, Peter, and Andrew, and then James and John to follow him. And then seemingly, he just continued on his way with his new disciples in tow. In order to follow Jesus, in order to become his disciples, these boys left behind their whole lives, their livelihoods, and even their families. To be a disciple is a sacrifice. And these boys went out of their way to be disciples. What am I saying? Well, I hear people lament from time to time, asking, why is nobody going out of their way to disciple me? But perhaps what we really should be asking is, am I going out of my way to be discipled? It is the disciple that is called to follow the discipler at the discipler's convenience and at the disciple's expense. With my pastor, Dean Rush, I happily go out of my way to get around him. I don't ask him to go out of his way to get around me. At my expense and at his convenience, I will regularly welcome his counsel. I listen to him. I observe him. I assist him in whatever way I can, possibly because I know something of the burden that he carries. And I have found that as I have positioned myself with humility and teachability, In the path of somebody worth following, somebody following Jesus, I have learned so much about life and about faith, and that is discipleship at its best. In today's church, oftentimes the church devises schemes and strategies and ministries that proactively go about trying to provide pastoral care, chasing people all over the city, trying to disciple them. But the model here is that it is the disciple that is called to follow the discipler at the discipler's convenience and at the disciple's expense. Let's continue to look at the sacrifice of being a disciple. Turn with me now to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Jesus said to his disciples, "'Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves.'" And take up their cross and follow me. What does it mean to deny oneself? Well, in marriage, to which our relationship with Christ is often compared, there are moments where you will find marriage, the marriage relationship, to be the most agreeable arrangement, the most wonderful relationship. However, there are also moments where you will find marriage to be completely disagreeable to your appetites. Oftentimes, in those moments, you are called upon to decline the pursuit of your appetites for the well-being of your spouse and for the good of your marriage. If your mindset in marriage or in any relationship is one where you are primarily concerned with having your needs met or insistent on getting your own way all of the time, your relationship will always be fraught with more tension and more conflict than what is healthy and normal. Every marriage will have days when we will come to the crossroads and encounter and be called upon to negotiate the tension of the inner conflict between what I want for me and what is best for us. But despite how you may feel on those days, you persevere. Because the conviction of your commitment that was formalized on that altar transcends momentary flinches of uncertainty. 